I'm making four cents per minute. I think Double Island's fine. Maybe. Gorio, smallpox. Sounds good. Thank you for the bits. Is that rant already on there? Not quite. Not quite. We don't do post-production work midstream. Pop back on in, shall we? How much to play JAC today? I had someone put a tier three sub towards JAC, so I will play JAC as the sixth deck today if it gets to the $50 minimum to jump to the top of the queue. So $30, $30. We'll get we'll get some JAC action today. Otherwise, otherwise, we're gonna follow the queue. So I will I will do an extra league at the end if there's a $30 tip towards JAC. Thank you for the, the bits there, minus the Karn, because fuck Hollowed One. God bless. Uh, basically, our opponent cast turn one Burning Inquiry out of Hollowed One, and I had two obstinate Baloths in my hand. Not only did my opponent not hit my Baloths, but they didn't hit their Hollowed One, and they discarded my green sources. We're definitely getting the Dice Factory. At a minimum, we are playing Token, Shadow Aggro, and Dice Factory today. So we're playing at least three more leagues, at least 15 matches. Um, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. We have more than... Do we have, we only have 19 spells? No, we have, uh, we have 28 spells. We have 28 spells. Mentor triggers on non-instance and sorceries, chat. This is why we have a basic mountain in our deck. Can you use my monthly tier C reps from last month to push? Sounds good, Anorotix. That sounds great. You haven't you haven't given me anything for a while. You haven't or sent me any deck list for a while is what I mean. So yeah, that is perfectly fine. Well, our Keep a five lander and hope to draw spells plan is not panning out. Maester with the $35 donation. Love me some JAC. Keep up the rants. Thanks for the support, folks. I'll I'll probably put it back in the queue too. I'm actually playing JAC at the open at the a 5k this weekend, so we'll get some practices in. Do I trade the Secure the Ways for the Goblin Guide here? I think I'm supposed to. They could have a bolt. If they have another Searing Blaze here, this feels really bad. But like, if I double block and then I like Bolt or Helix one of these tokens, I think that's fine for us. No, I want to minimize the amount of lands I could possibly draw. So I want the Goblin Guide to be able to clear a land off the top of my deck before I draw it. Wait until June 18th. I... I don't know what you kids are planning. I don't know what you kids are planning, but I feel like I should be scurred. For fuck's sake. Magic, magic is a low variance game sometimes. Magic, magic is a low variance game sometimes. All right, what are we boarding out here? Um, probably some cantrips. Bedlam's probably pretty slow. Coming for John. We are practicing to replace John Avon. I don't think I want Path in my deck. I think four bolts, four helix is probably enough. That's such a Twitch chat thing to say. Are you sure you're not playing too many lands after you get a little bit unlucky and flood out and die? 
Not on mobile today, so can't verify, but assuming four month anniversary of still no mobile option to resub with Prime. Yeah, you're not wrong. Thanks for, thanks for the four months of support, AC. I appreciate that. Welcome back. My sand team's great, right? It seems quite excellent. Go scalding turn on one pass. We can bolt a, bolt a one drop. Raise the alarm on two ascendancy after that. So 23 lands might actually be a touch too many for the curve in this deck. But when you consider the fact that we have cantrips to discard lands when we don't need them. And on June 18th, your life is going to change for the better, Jeff. Just remember that all of chat loves you very much. Okay, Project Swab. Okay. I'm still a little worried. I feel like I feel like I should be worried. I'm playing this as opposed to the planes because I kind of want to wait till after Ascendancy to play the Raise the Alarms. And there's probably a good chance they play an idol on this turn. Well, I appreciate it, Mage Sir. Nobody in, in any way is ever obligated to donate, but I appreciate the people that do. Y'all y'all are the reason that I'm able to stay here as a job. Uh, that was a wrong fetch land. I need double red for this. 10 out of 10 should have fetched a red source there. The reason why I didn't fetch a red source there is because I messed up. Just turn up at Jeff's store for the 18th. <sighs> yeah, I think maybe I messed up. I, I was too defensive here. I probably should have played the raise the alarm on two. Yeah, that probably should have happened. Please just don't stream on the 18th. Uh, I don't actually think Burn cares that much about Batter Skull. Not only do they have destructive revelry, but they also have lots of skull crack effects. Like putting a Batter Skull into play on turn three means it doesn't attack till turn four. And guess what turn Burn often has lethal by? Surprise, it's turn four. I assume Dr. PZ is going to die in response here. Searing Blaze is pretty bad for us. Yeah, down to five and they have two cards in hand. I think Ascendancy was fine this game. I think the issue was that I didn't make tokens on two. Hey, Blender, I'm sorry. Thank you for the bits. You don't have anything to be sorry for. Remember, it's okay to get timed out here on occasion. People have memory lapses. I'm going to attack with both of these. I'm going to fetch a basic mountain. An impressive card like Batter Skull would push decks like Crystal Brand out of the format, right? Did, did they just pet? What? So we have a chance. So what you're saying is we have a chance because for some reason my opponent has Path to Exile it against me. God bless you, opponent. Here's hoping we can loot into a helix next turn. Or we're dead. 
Sounds like we're dead. Eidolon? This deck, this deck might be a little bit too slow, clunky, and fair for modern chat. Might, might be a little bit too slow, clunky, and fair. Just guy ascendancy is kind of an awkward card when you're trying to play fair. It's a slow, slow card when you're trying to play fair. Too fair is the worst, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but Jitty creates pretty miserable play patterns. Let's let's keep Jitty where it is. I have I have zero desire to play fair mirrors where where Umazawa's GTA is involved. That card is not a good time. This was a very sweet deck and con standard. Like a lot of new players often ask like does anyone ever enjoy standard it seems like all people ever do is rag on it con standard was probably the last really great standard format that we had in magic con standard was a very very enjoyable standard format in my opinion the tin if you are a legacy fan and you haven't watched the tin fin depths video yet on my youtube channel you you need to do that today you need, or this week at some point. Obviously, you don't have to leave watching live, but if you are a Legacy fan and you haven't watched the Tin Depths video, that deck is a fucking hoot. Oh, you want to ramp me into my Gideon? God bless. God bless. See Chrome Co's Path to Exiles. Yeah. I think we're just going to click Submit. I think we're not quite sure what they're doing. We're just going to run it back. Salumgar Scorn was great. I agree. I agree. Played a lot of Salumgar Scorn. Loved that card enough that uh, I uh, really tried to make it work in Modern. It's really funny, too, because if you got in a time machine and went back in time, there were a bunch of people that, like, thought Siege Rhino was too good. And it's just like, what if what if I told you that the future is dark and scary and you should enjoy Siege Rhino? I think a large part of their problems is that the threats are too good. The gods are, like, really offensive card designs. I guess maybe we could have gauged that there were some kind of poop bears deck off their last straw. We could have brought in some extra removal. Hopefully they path this meant this uh, pyromancer. I agree. Yep, yeah, Scarab got. And again, like a big part of it goes back to just like these cards that are really offensive and create bad standard formats are cards that are offensive because they're hard to interact with. Let people inter fucking act with each other. It's really not that complicated. Hey, Brecken Sky, on June 18th, your life will change forever, but until then, you'll receive no more donations from us. I am. I am both scared and and excited about june 18th i don't know what i don't know what justin is planning but there's there's a lot of you at this point there's a lot of you at this point there's no way this lives up to the hype we'll see we'll see definitely don't need that i'm gonna bottom this land too probably So next turn, I can actually go Mentor, Stoke the Flames, right? Which is kind of sweet. Uh, 
Do I just play Chad? Actually, I just played Chad and Emblem here, right? I'm not dead in the air, right? Maybe I'm supposed to stoke this turn. I'm supposed to go mentor stoke this turn and then Chad next turn. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do there. Am I dead to landlord? Yeah, I'm exactly dead to landlord. Yeah, I think I messed that up. Let's bring in some more removal for this next game. Chad's actually going to come out this game because he's very bad against their flying threats. We don't have enough removal to keep the pressure off of him. Should some cantrips be good? Is the meter a YouTube channel? Does that still exist? That, that's got to be forever ago. It feels like a different lifetime, honestly. I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. What's going on, Internet? Have a good day at work. Thanks for dropping by. Sounds better. Much better. Nope, they did not ever recover from their data loss. Oh wow, it's been a while since I punted that bad. Forgot to uh, forgot to start recording this league. I'll have to clip it off of Twitch. Uh, the meadery didn't have offsite backups, apparently, the guy that was running it, and they suffered data loss on their server, and they didn't have any backups. It was really pretty embarrassing. That's perfect. A Vagabog, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month. Welcome. You should do backups, and then you should do backups of your backups, and then you should have your backups in two physical locations. Put them, buy, buy some Amazon cloud storage, buy, buy a VPS somewhere if you don't trust Amazon. Like, get, get your shit in different places. Hey, the tech zombie with the brand new prime support as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. I don't think I'm quite ready to trade this just yet. We'll play another PZ next turn, and then we'll just have removal for the following three turns. For those who are unfamiliar, you haven't played, you've just started playing Magic or you didn't follow, they weren't, they weren't very large. The Meadery was an attempt at someone making, it was a Magic social, it was a social network that focused on integrating Magic features into it. Which was, it was a really neat concept. So, I'm gonna path this before I play the other Pyromancer because I wanna be able to pay for this Mausoleum Wander Wanderer. I don't think they have any way to punish this. If they have a sweeper, it's probably like settle the wreckage. I 
I guess they play selfless spirit, so they could play a traditional sweeper. Maybe maybe playing out the other young pyromancer is a little bit loose here. Sure. On June 18th, your life will change forever, but until... <laughs> you know, maybe with all of y'all making me wait till June 18th, I'll actually be able to work through the donation queue. Maybe, maybe at some point I'll actually work through it all. <laughs> maybe we'll get back down to like 50 or 60 decks in the next two weeks. I can dream, right? I can dream. Now we're waiting for the third batch of this league to pop. I'd just like to say thanks everyone for hanging out. There's a lot of different things you could be doing on Monday. Lots of Twitch streams you could be watching, but thanks for joining us here. My name's Jeff Holgan, a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I stream Magic 30 plus hours a week. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are a big part of why I'm able to stream full-time now like I do. You can also support myself by checking out some of my wonderful sponsors, mtgotraders.com. I love to buy and sell some magic online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal at check out with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Inkgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags there. And of course, the wonderful moderator staff here would like to welcome everyone to Hoaglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighborhood moderator about receiving your complimentary timeout. This game seems okay, right? This game seems okay. Nah, I don't I like I like doing it live. I think pre-recorded commercials are really impersonal. I think, uh, I think it also allows me some flexibility. Uh, we 5 would with the Grishel brand. It was great. It was more than good. It's great. Every, see, everybody loves, everybody loves free shit. Free timeouts. Perfect. That's, that's like the nuts, right? So we have Dr. PZ into Just Guy Ascendancy. Sign me up. Since we started advertising complimentary timeouts, the number of timeouts we hand out has, has risen drastically. Bogles, Devoted Company. It looks like Devoted Company probably. The real charges come in next month. Grab a land here. I should get more red. I should prioritize red mana more. Red and white mana are both bigger priorities. Hey! On June 18th, your life will change forever, but until then, you'll receive no more donations from us. Thank you for the bits, red town. They could be value town, yeah. They could be. I think I'm fetching a Sacred Foundry tapped, and then I'll grab a basic mountain off of this and we'll secure next turn, and then the following turn hopefully we'll kill them. I guess I'm gonna kill this tracker though, because it's gonna deal damage to me. On June 18th, you're like. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Libelik. Oh, chat. <coughs> oh, chat. All right, let's stand up here. Sitting for a little while. Ziggurat with the brand new tier one sub. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for the support. Thanks for helping me do what I do here. If they want to ghost quarter themselves, that's fine. I'm excited for you. I hope you are too. 
Wow, there goes their hand must be really rancid to go score themselves here. Or they just like have a mana creature that they want to play anyways. Nope. Weird. Yeah, I would rather discard that and keep my basics. That way I can uh can pay less health here. We need a timeout leaderboard. I love how people sub and then ask to be timed out. This channel's great. <laughs> Y'all are excellent. Thanks, thanks everybody for being here and being excellent. That's not a land. All right, hopefully we can chain, chain a bunch of stuff together here and maybe even kill them. So I'm gonna do this now at sorcery speed because we could draw like a serum visions. God, that's rancid. Ooh, I tapped wrong. Okay. My sequencing here is a little loose. Actually, so if they don't block, they're dead, right? If they don't block, they're dead. And if they do block, we kill we kill the Corsair instead of combat. So I'm actually gonna stoke this bird. Because they've been missing land drops. So if they hadn't blocked there, the stoke would have actually been lethal. We couldn't be excellent without your stream, yep. All right, well, they're not dead on board, but they're dead to any spell we draw that triggers JAC. Hey, look, it's like jac Seption triggers. Pro Probe would be good in this deck, you're not wrong. All right, so this is definitely a path matchup. Hey, Wizzies3618, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. Thanks for supporting my stuff this month. I appreciate that. Welcome. So I definitely want Path. I want all my grindy elements. Is Helix not good enough? Helix is probably kind of mediocre, right? Stoke the Flames actually seems... Uh, maybe it's a little slow. What do I want to trim as my last trim? Is it just like an opt tier? Maybe I could be greedy and trim a land on the draw. Trimming a land on the draw doesn't seem like a bad idea. Against other fair mid-rangey decks, I think this deck is very seems very reasonable. I think it's probably just, we got smoked by Burn in the first match. I think it's probably a touch too slow and clunky against the more aggressive decks in the format. But I think against things like Green-White Value Town that we're playing against here, we're probably pretty okay. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Chew Punishing Waterfall, is the fact that their Path to Exile deck makes trimming a land less less offensive. Definitely agree with that assessment. This, this deck only has like half the copies of Ascendancy that the other Ascendancy deck that we play has. That's so weird. That's so weird. His hand's great. Need some cantrips at some point. Maybe this is a little bit awkward in the opener, but I think it's fine overall. The opponent's deck isn't particularly aggressive, and their most aggressive draws get broke up by Path to Exile. Someone commented earlier that the mana base is probably a little bit wrong in this deck. Thinking about it more, that's almost certainly correct. Two islands is very, very wrong. We have double red and double white spells, and we have two islands in our deck for some reason.
June 18th, your life will change forever until then you'll be received. Uh, welcome to the cult, Full Metal. Just gonna, I'm just going to start referring to you folks as the cult. Until I'm proven otherwise, you are a cult. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. The cult is planning something. I really do feel like this is a cult now, one of us, right? So I'm saying... Ratchet bomb. Rude. It's rude opponent. Just drink the Kool-Aid. Hooglandia will ride. Do they have another land? Oh, they do. Okay. Um... Am I pathing this? I think I'm just pathing. Well, that, that's a pretty good one. That, that means I'm gonna go ahead and jam this. I'm a degenerate gambler. I just four one and opened my chest and got a noble hierarch. Feel like I might've been set up for failure. I wonder if they're gonna tick the bomb up to kill the ascendancy or if they're just gonna, yeah, they're just gonna save it to clear the tokens. That makes sense. Makes sense. On June 18th, your life will change forever until the... Oh, well, I guess we're bringing in... I guess we're bringing in wear tear for the last game. I really don't want to play through this choke, so I'm just going to go ahead and concede. I guess I don't have that many blue cards in my deck. Fuck. Do I play through this choke? I really don't want to play through this fucking choke. I guess this just lets me loot through my blue spells. And I just like go get another sacred foundry. Yeah, I guess I guess we can beat this, huh? Our deck isn't very blue despite having a mana base that's misbuilt and having a bunch of islands in it. Oh, I actually boarded out one of those two, right? So we're definitely not going to have that boarded out for the last match. Yeah, boarded a basic iron for a spire bluff. I think that makes sense. I'm also going to board the Werters in because they have Ratchet Bombs, they have Chokes, they have Coursers. I didn't think it was worth bringing in Ratchet Bomb just to kill Courser, but I do think it's worth bringing it in to tag Choke and Ratchet Bomb potentially. No, I hit enter too soon. <sighs> yeah, probably up for Werter seems reasonable. I think I'm going to stoke down this Corsair this turn. You ready to get fucking blown out? You ready to get blown out of the mother fucking water? You ready? You ready to get got? Good line. Good line, opponent. Good line. You ready to, ready to stoke some flames here? God. God bless us, everyone. I could Alarms into Stoke the Flames here, but I think Alarm would force them to crack their Ratchet Bomb, and I'd like to get in some pressure here. I'd like to get in some pressure. Oh, they're making me sack the Ascendancy. It's a little bit of a tilt. I guess I should have realized that was the other mode. What's this cost? Six still. They only have two cards left in their hand here. It's a company. Sure. They have voice. I don't get to use my mana this turn, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Man, what a what a powerful four mana magic card you have cast, opponent. What a what a low variance and powerful magic the gathering card.
No, I don't plan to stoke this turn. I want to hold this, this, the, the stoke of removal. I hope you know who organized all of this, that he lives up to his name. He definitely lives up to his username. You're not wrong. That's pretty good. They're going to be forced to crack this ratchet bomb. And we can actually, like, if they crack this bomb here at their end of turn, we can go raise the alarm and stoke the flames. You'll need to pop up your user settings, Turk and Duncan. You'll need to pop up your user settings on the on the desktop, on the web, on the what's it called client. All right, so I'm gonna cast this. They have no cards in their hand. They can ghost. They can ghost quarter themselves here. Ziggurat, thank you very much for the 500 bits. I do appreciate that. Welcome. So they can make this knight a five five. Oh, I can just double stoke their face. Oh, yeah, I totally can do that. Shh. 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 Chat. Chat. Shh. 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 I didn't, I didn't pivot. I didn't realize that we were so close to killing them. This, this card's a lot of, I forgot about this card from standard. This card's a lot of fucking reach. This card's a lot of reach. Just jump up and smack you in the face. All right. All right, chat. Chat lethal, actually lethal. Chat lethal, actually lethal. God bless. God bless us, everyone. Yeah, I agree, Punishing Waterfalls. I think we have a lot of a lot of legs against decks that aren't killing us very quickly. Like, Ascendancy, one of the reasons why the Ascendancy combo deck is so decent is because it draws so many cards and has so much selection. We are two and one currently. We lost the first match to Burn, and now we've beaten Blue White Spirits and then uh Green White Company. How would Rabble Master be instead of Mentor? Mentor's a really good card. Rabble Master's a little bit more synergistic with... Actually, I think the one one of the changes I would make in this deck, I think these Raise the Alarm should probably just be Dragon Fodders. On June 18th, your life will change forever, but until then you receive no more donations from us, the cult will rise. Oh, Bob. Bob, we've lost you to the cult, Bob. We've lost you to the cult. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the Serum Visions on one just to dig for a third land here. Go double bottom here. Yeah, I think, I think those... Those raise the alarm should just be dragon fodder just for the synergy with Stoke the Flames. It's like a control deck. If they're not just Kai, that means they need to path to take this Pyromancer off the table, which is good for us. Land, land, land. That's such a tilt. Remember when, remember when chat wanted to cut lands earlier? If I don't get donations for two weeks, no, no, we'll be, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. So long as, so long as the stub, subs stay about the same, we'll be okay. And have you, have you seen the donation queue? Like I've, I, I quite literally have if if we stopped getting donation decks altogether today, I have a minimum of four weeks of donation decks to stream. It's there's a there's a lot in there. Magic's a very low variance game, certainly less variance than Hearthstone.
do a full week of 24 hour streams. Yeah, yep. Nope, I have zero, zero desire to up the cost of donation decks. Um, I, I want people that can't afford to donate a lot to be able to send in donation decks on occasion. I think the, the system where you can either cut the line by donating extra money or you can just wait, wait your turn is very, very reasonable. I am, I am very upfront about how the system works. It's very obvious that if you're donating the minimum amount, if you look at that queue, how long you're going to be waiting, it's gonna be a little while, but I want people that are willing to wait to be able to wait. Also, people people who donate, there's a lot of people who can only donate the minimum amount to get a donation deck into the queue, and then other people go look at the queue, and they go, oh, that deck looks sweet, and then other people donate money to decks that they didn't submit to get that deck moved up faster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a number of people that regularly donate to decks that they didn't put in the queue because they look sweet. If, if you're looking for sweet modern and legacy decks, diving into the queue that we have is often a great place to look because there's always a ton of sweet stuff in there. I think Crumble is too narrow. I guess Bolt's pretty bad though, right? Someone asked about the details on donation decks. You can learn about how donation decks work here and the minimum to get in the queue at that link there, bit.ly forward slash Google sellout. 100% of, of the stuff on the donation queue is explained there. Yeah, a lot of people charge charge like 25 or 30 or 50 plus. It's it's a lot of money. And like I my my goal my goal for the queue is that ideally I want to be streaming enough that if someone donates a $50 donation with the deck that they're that's going to automatically put them at the top of the queue. So my my goal is to make it so Ideally, most of the decks we keep in the queue stay under 50 points. My goal is that at, at a minimum, I want to keep decks under 50 points towards the top of the queue. I thought you said your version was different, Anonymic. Is it, is it identical to the one, the one that's already in there? Oh no, you're right. The other one already has already has it. It's off by a card, so it, it's up to you. So I can either merge merge those together for you, or I was reading chat and checking on stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and fetch Shocklands Tap here. Probably should have seen your visions. I think I need to prioritize red mana so we're gonna get Sacred Foundry Steam Vents here. Honestly, prioritizing red mana is another reason not to Serum Visions right away. Yeah, no worries, Anonymic. I'll merge them up and then we'll get and then we'll get to it sooner between what you donated today. Uh, you should whisper me on Twitch or send me a direct message on Discord or Twitter. Just looking for a land. And we're gonna get punished, I'm sure. Oh, dang, that's sweet. Alright, so um I'm pretty sure I just want to jam here and make them make them have it basically if they have a counter spell for the ascendancy. If this gets going, it's real good. Before OP slams blood boot, right? What kind of list is a death? It's gonna be like a mid, a green black mid range deck. Would you play free win red and modern? That's like the blood moon bridge chalice deck, right? I don't think those decks are very good. I don't really enjoy playing them. I play free win red in legacy. I think that archetype is very good in legacy, but I don't think it's good in modern. Chalice of the void just doesn't line up well. Uh, I think I'm just going bottom bottom and trying to hit lands here, right? Especially with this other ascendancy draw. I think I'll take one of these lands. I'm gonna bottom the other one. This gets tagged by Cryptic, but again, just kind of into making them have things. 
I think we're probably a little bit too far behind here. We'll see. This is probably one of the tougher fair matchups for us, which is probably like a knock against this deck, right? Like we're too clunky against the really aggressive decks and like against these decks that are going way over the top, we're probably too slow, which means like we only beat things like exactly in the middle and there aren't that many things exactly in the middle in modern. The mana base in this deck, double red, double white, and then a lot of other cards is kind of met too. Chalice lines up much better in Legacy than in Modern. You should go, go, here's, here's an exercise for you, Ball, to answer your question. You should go look at the top six most popular decks on Goldfish in Legacy and Modern and compare the number of one mana spells in those decks. There are far more one mana spells in Legacy than there are in Modern. By and away, far, far and away. No, almost certainly doesn't beat Trod. Far, far too slow and clunky. Legacy also has more ways to play Chalice of the Void on the first turn of the game. That is also true. It's it's a it's a combination of not only legacy having more one mana spells, but also legacy having more ways to play chalice in the first turn of the game. Yeah, yeah, I don't think this deck is very good. It's got some neat things going on in like in a very specific format. You could probably have some okay matchups against particular things, but like I said, I think I think we both lose to things going way far over the top, like Just Kai and Blue Eye Control, and we have a harder time with things trying to get under us. Well, here's a here's a chance for the run back at the matchup for that we just played to see if my assessment is correct or if we just ran really bad. This isn't JAC. JAC stands for Jeskai Ascendancy Combo Ranting Bob. This is not the deck I'm playing this weekend. Jeskai Ascendancy Combo is a storm-like combo deck. Now, I'm really not a fan of Scred Red. Scred Red is basically, it's very similar to, to the prison deck. I, I think Blood Moon is not particularly good in modern right now. I think a lot of the decks that Blood Moon is good against aren't fantastic in the format. There's a lot of decks that just get under Blood Moon, and the decks that don't get under Blood Moon can play through Blood Moon very reasonably. Um, I played a little... I think I actually have a box of Warhammer Fantasy stuff in the garage somewhere. I played that a little bit during, during high school and undergrad. I think Magic's a luxury hobby, and Wizards of the Coast has no intention of ever reprinting those older Legacy cards. So if Legacy becomes prohibitively expensive, I don't think Wizards of the Coast cares. Legacy doesn't make Wizards money directly. It doesn't generate repeat customer for them. So I don't think we're going to see that change in the future anytime soon. After the last time we played it dirty, we we literally had our opponent just like super locked up out of the game. And I just, it was so miserable to sit there and play that I just didn't even want to finish the match that we were playing. It just, it's got some interesting decisions, but by and large, just like locking your opponent out of playing the game and then like having to sit there and tediously play through it is kind of frustrating. Well, Chad is pretty good here. It's a good chance he takes over the game. I think the logic with the Bedlam Revelers is that Jeskai Ascendancy helps us churn through our deck to enable casting them. But like between Jeskai Ascendancy and Gideon Ally of Zendikar, I think we probably have enough grindy cards that beat fair decks. So the Bedlams are probably too much.
So what, what I said a second ago about legacy not being a card that could make them product consistently, the consistently part is, is the important part of that statement. Wizards of the Coast could make money off of legacy. The problem is legacy players don't equate to repeat customers. That's, that's the key thing that makes legacy worse for Wizards of the Coast than, than formats like standard. And it makes modern worse too, right? Like there's a reason why Wizards doesn't support modern that much. It's the only reason modern isn't prohibitively expensive is because they don't have a reserve list as a cop out to not support the format. Sure, Burke, but that is the tedious part, but the prison deck doesn't want more win conditions. I'm not gonna make a deck worse just by just to make it less tedious. I'd rather just play something else. Like, I would much rather just play something else rather than put a bad win condition into my deck. I didn't raise the alarm there to get two extra points of damage because if my opponent has a sweeper next turn, I'd prefer to make my tokens at their end of turn. Sure, that is an influx of new buyers and they will make money as a one-time segment, but what you have to understand is that everything that Wizards does to support non-rotating formats comes at a risk because if Legacy and Modern were suddenly as the same price as Standard, there are a non-zero number of Standard players that would stop playing Standard and start playing these non-rotating formats only where they have to buy a very minimal amount of cards to keep up with their decks. So supporting formats like Legacy and Modern more has a cost risk associated with it for Wizards of the Coast. It's not, it's not just a free roll for them. Just gonna bin this Bedlam Reveler, it really is not doing much. It's a pretty good draw. So let's recover from a sweeper nicely. Just gonna keep blessing this and smashing. And they ca they can't even cryptic because we drew the instant. They can't even cryptic tap draw our team here. Oh fuck! Am I about to get settle the wreckage? I'm about to get fucking settle the wreckage, aren't I? This is lethal though. Fuck it, settle me. God bless. I never really, I didn't like the blue black when we tried it. It didn't feel very good. Sarah C, I get my course. I hope your work day gets better. Um, so if I cast the secure, they obviously don't have a sweeper, right? Or they would have swept last turn. This will be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can put them to three. And with a bunch of helixes and bolts in my deck and ascendancy in play, I think it's definitely worth settling here. I'm gonna do it in response to this pyromancer. Yeah, I just, I really feel like a lot of players think that like Wizards wants all of these formats to be very accessible when the reality is like they have a real cost risk associated with making those accessible that they have to take into account when they, when they make the cards cheaper basically. Yeah, it's very possible I just should have emblem there. There aren't enough cheap instants in my deck, I think. And obviously we drew an opt. Yeah, there's four. I guess I could have, I guess I could have done it for two less, but I think just making more tokens there is better. Stoke was, well, Stoke was lethal regardless, right? Stoke, Stoke was lethal regardless. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Looking for a bolt, looking for a bolt. Heidi ho the cheerio, looking for a bolt. Am I supposed to mentor first here? Maybe. I'm just gonna dig for a bolt. 
We have four bolts and two helixes in my deck. So, so much selection. They could have a cryptic command here, I suppose. Have my time out. I got you, Danky Dankerson. Thanks for the support. Welcome to a live one. That, uh, that's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. That's going to help us draw to a bolt here. This deck's been very mediocre. Very, I haven't played a land yet this turn, right? You're me, Yugi boy. This is all I get. Put a stop on their upkeep. Because if they don't... Yeah, buddy. Tap out for me, baby. Tap out for me, baby. Just like I like it. Yeah. Stoke ya. Give it to me, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, we played a Blue-Red Wizards League a little while ago. Last week, week before, one of the two. Fairly, fairly recently. That yeah, was a good turn. We turned, we turned through a lot of cards that turn. Yeah, I mean, like, activating the Ads Cantor there isn't a strict mistake from the opponent because... If their hand doesn't do anything, just making us have it is ideal there. Verg55, thank you very much for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for helping me do what I do here. We're going to wrap up this last match against Just Guy Control with our Just Guy Tokens deck. And then we've got a Shadow Aggro deck, Dice Factory, and then Just Guy Ascendancy Control before we're done for today. Going to be going for a little while yet here. Another 15 matches of Modern or so. We've been streaming for four hours so far. If you haven't caught, caught all of the streams today, be sure to check out my YouTube channel later. Everything gets archived there, and I break them up by deck and by format, so you can watch just the stuff they care about. Sure, but that assumes that they have counter magic in their hand, and it puts them behind on their mana for a turn. So, like, again, if you're in a position that you can't really beat anything out of your opponent, you just shouldn't play around anything. Like, playing scared is going to lose you way more matches than it wins on average. I don't even think it's greedy even if they had a counterspell. Because, like, if they activate it on their turn and then counterspell, then I just, what, slam Bedlam River, draw a Lightning Bolt, and kill you? Yeah, JAC is a combo deck. This is Ascendancy Tokens. This is not JAC. This is not Just Guy Ascendancy Combo. I got you, Verg. What is... What kind of problem... No, my opponent's playing Just Kai Control. My opponent's... Oh, did I say Just Kai Control for the third deck we're playing today? Then I'm mushing my words up. Um, oh, no. Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire. Friendly Huge. Someone unbanned Huge Elf Boy. All right, I got it. Sorry. Sorry. Took a little... Took a little friendly fire. Um, I We are testing two copies of engineered explosives in Just Guy Ascendancy combo, which felt pretty good. But other than that, there haven't really been any changes. Who know the timeout beam and come by just to ask for a timeout, right? Like, I wasn't going to watch anyways, but I'd like a timeout while I'm here. <laughs> uh... Is friendly fire? I feel like it should be if it's not. Someone should someone should send that message to Elsick. It's not even strictly about the free mana maester. Like, we had Noxious Revival to generate free mana in the same way while also being utility. And you're explosive, the fact that it's interaction while also being free mana is very good. It allows you to have a little bit of interaction in your main deck at a very low cost. Friendly fire is when we go to time someone out and I misclick and time out someone I didn't mean to time out.
Yeah, I agree. I agree. The people that are that are writing off the opponent as like getting killed by my Stoke the Flames for a reason not to activate their ass in that first game, I think those those are being like typical results based Twitch chat viewers. Like just making the correct percentage play doesn't mean you always win the game. It just means you're giving yourself the best possible chance to win a game. And sometimes you're far enough behind that the correct percentage play ends up with you dying. And that's that's okay. Whoa, do they have a Celestial Purge or a Disenchant or something? Yeah, they mouse straight. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, timeouts. Timeouts just mean you can't post in chat. Which is why when, like, Reddit users would get really salty about getting timed out, it's like, y'all can still watch the stream. If you just wanted to complain, you can go somewhere else. Uh, Retraction Helix is pretty mediocre and not a card that I play in the Ascendancy deck. I think Retraction Helix is a good example of a win more card. If you, the Retraction Helix is only really great when you have Ascendancy out and a creature or permanent or whatever. And like, if you have Ascendancy out, you don't need help drawing through your entire deck. I don't know. I haven't played any humans. So I don't really have an opinion on that. Do I just jam this Mentor? If I get to untap with it, it's pretty fucking good, right? Yep, that's a great a great way to articulate it, Nerdster. It's another way of saying it doesn't fix problems. Yep, or it didn't have a lot of one-minute cantrips. Don't we all want to win more, right? Why just win a lot when you can win a whole lot more? So I'm actually going to secure now because I would like to not get Cryptic Commanded on this. If they have a Negate or a Mana Leak or whatever, that's fine. And if they Wrath us on their turn, I just get to untap and play another secure. Hey, Cheesy Pie Gaming. Thank you for the six-month resubscription. I really appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for half a year. It's okay for all-in combo decks to lose the sideboard cards. That's like saying you can't play Affinity because your opponent's going to have Stony Silence. It's like, no, sometimes you just lose the sideboard cards, and that's okay. I'd play more Fetch and Shocklands. Well, that, that is... I don't actually know how I feel about that. I feel like I'm supposed to stop it, but at the same time, like, if they give me three lands, then I just secure for more later. This is like a glass half full, settle the wreckage. I think you've said you think it's good that a deck like in Modern tends to be the best deck. Yeah, that's fine. That's exactly what I've said in the past. I'm not sure what your what the point of your comment is. You are you are in fact quoting something I've said in the past. I mean, were you playing a combo deck, Ashiok? If you're playing a combo deck, like sure, Dredge, Dredge is bad against combo decks. The Sphinx's revelation. Oh no! Oh no! A bigger secure the waste. The wastes are so secure, chat. The wastes are so secure. Why are they, why are they so secure? <laughs> I don't like these wastes. What a, what a waste. Ugh. Yeah, I should have left white man up here, whatever. I think I'm just stoking their dome here, right? Maybe I should have stoked on my turn, actually. Is there anything that embodies Twitch chat 
more than saying lethal burn in hand when I have 11 points of burn and my opponent's at 12. I really, I'm trying to think of if there's anything that embodies Twitch chat more than that moment, but I'm having a hard time coming up with it. Oh, they were psychic. They knew there was another stoke on top. I got it. I got it. They knew there was another stoke on top. So I'm going to end step secure to play into a counter spell. And then we've got some more reach. I play Grixis Death Shadow. But my meta is really rough for the deck. I enjoy it. Yep. I saw the Gorio as foretold. I don't think that deck is very good. I think it's just doing too many different things. I think if you want to play a Gorio's Vengeance deck, you should just play Grishel Brand. I think all the other Grishel Gorio's Vengeance decks in Modern aren't particularly powerful. If you think Grixis Control... Grixis Control is not very good against Bogles or Tron. God, if they go to eight here. Well, they uh, they activated their colonnade the wrong the wrong step. They are already in blockers. Shame scoop. Jim Scoop. All right, so we finished the 3-2. This deck was a modern deck. Um, feedback on how I would improve this specific deck. I think these, I mentioned this earlier, I think these raise the alarm should probably just be Dragon Fodders because activating Stoke the Flames is really important. Honestly, I think I'd just max on Stoke the Flames and just like kind of leverage into the token burn style deck, maybe trimming a Gideon. These Bedlam Revelers were really kind of awkward. I think this deck has enough grind power between Ascendancy and Gideon already to kind of grind through the kind of mid-range decks that Bedlam's very good against. I would consider trying Goblin Rabble Master potentially. Now, I think the number of creatures we are are fine. We started with Crystal Brand today. That was the first deck we played. Overall, I think this archetype's a little bit medium just because like it's going to have a hard time with decks that get really under you. And I think if the Jeskai opponent had played slightly tighter, we probably would have had a hard time with that third game, but blue-white control felt really tough for sure. Mentor actually never really got going. Mentor was a lightning rod a couple of times, but three mana cards in modern are definitely hard to get going. Making, making these raise the alarms into dragon fodders actually makes the mentor a little bit better because you can go you can go dragon fodder and then like into mentor on four plus stoke the flames right away. Not so. Mardu Pyromancer is a different deck than this. This is this is more akin to a burn deck or a token stack. Mardu Pyromancer is not either of those things. It is a mid-range deck. I don't think you want more cards that are dedicated pump spells. I think Ascendancy is the only thing in Gideon that are fine. Just the, the instant speed on this is irrelevant. This the mana also needs to be fixed here as well. Um Double islands are really silly. A second mountain or a second plains is probably reasonable, but honestly, you probably just need three basics. All right, what are we doing next? Shadow aggro? This will probably be a pretty quick one, honestly. Pretty, pretty fast. I think three mana cards are too expensive. I guess you could play Hordling Outburst instead of 